Hello everyone and thank you for coming to my channel. And as usual, we're coming to our segment of Don't Be Telling My Business. And I'm like, I got to because it's scandalous. Yes, I gotta talk about you and you. It's gonna be marvelous. So let's get into it. Child, honey, baby, we got Marlo Hampton, the first lady of the chair, coming down, being a peach holder for season 14. Yes, 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 yes. And Lord Retha, just like we couldn't get you to lift up your titties when you were alive and you thought you was looking fabulous. Child, we can't get Marlo or Kenya on the same playing field okay but like Aretha said you better think think about what you're trying to do to me yeah think 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 that your mind gonna let yourself be free that little picture when Marlo called herself being jilted by Nene Leakes and Kenya befriended her and you know we went and saw the comings and goings of Miss Kenya Moore and Miss Marlo Hampton somewhat just slide between uh, the cricks and the crevices to liking each other to not liking each other but her coming in with that three-piece band and upsetting Marlo Hampton's wig coming out of then and whoo child they just go back and forth back and forth but can't nobody serve it up like can you more now Nene Leaks was serving some dishes up along with Kim Zosiac with them two fighting here and there. Talking about scooters and close your um, legs to married men and wig snatching of what Sheree was trying to, uh, I guess, reposition Kim Zosiac wig. We know we don't been through all of it. And Sheree saying Nene's car got repossessed out of a parking lot. That just goes on and on and on. And Andy Cohen was there for it, there for it, there for it. Great storylines, but can't depend on Nene Leakes to be there anymore because she's been ousted, okay? Thrown out to the wind to never to return again to the show. Sheree's pretty much on her way out the door, finally. Because I don't understand why we keep bringing her back. But she had convinced them that she was going to be a hot tamale. She had a firing crack. What do you call it? Fi fire crack. Well, wait a minute. Fire cracker type of storyline that we was gonna be pop, pop, popping like popcorn fresh out of the microwave. But that seemed to have gotten a pen stuck in the balloon and saturated all of our thoughts of her coming up with any type of storyline that would be believable because her boyfriend Tyrone had sent Bravo a cease and desist letter and he didn't want to be on the show causing him any more infringements of him getting out and then if that uh would play itself out and he got out he wants to be paid for his services <laughs> on the show but that's neither here nor there no more we don't even think Sheree's gonna have a full season where we see her she might have three episodes where we might see a little something something but they're very disturbed with her and i'm sure they had to go back and yank some of that money that they were promising her since she promised them this they're not getting it they can renege and say we're not giving you that but to uh cause you less sh uh stress and strain and public embarrassment we'll just let you appear on certain episodes okay but you ain't getting too much of no quality time all right and we're gonna edit six you on up out of here okay but reality tv brought out this um fictitious story that i really believe that is not true okay to me what do kenya and marlo have to discuss to be fussing about they don't hang in the same circles they put up with each other because they have to tape with one another because you don't want nobody stopping your bag okay because you got things to do you got to live you got to have food clothes shelter uh, transportation, you gotta have all that life insurance, self insurance. So, you ain't got time to be playing with nobody that you don't too much care for. So except for on the show where you have to take, but when you're on your own downtime and you don't really have to be around any housewives, nine times out of ten, you probably won't be because none of them are really true diehard friends. Okay, at least I don't think they are, or they wouldn't be on this ratchet TV show trying to show each other up from time to time. But we're gonna go back to what the article is giving me. 
so I can give it to you all because it's scandalous. These two were friends with Nene Leaks. Um, I ain't gonna say Kenya is out with Nene Leaks because she did show up at Greg's repast and they had a cordial event. It was no snide remarks, nobody trying to, you know, make a little dig here and there. It's just very kosher. Okay, but not saying that can't come in, in the future. But Marlo Hampton and Kenya Moore seems to be, as they say, in the social media world, YouTube world, they're at odds with one another. For me, I think it's a publicity stunt to give more traction towards them with the new show coming up. Of the new season they need to make some fireworks go in social media so that's why they have all these different platforms that they have to develop when they come on the show of the real housewives of atlanta they got to have an instagram account to you know be there for their followers their fans their viewers however anybody sees these reality stars these days then you got to have a youtube channel because you got to have a voice of what you're doing how you're doing it and probably some sneak peek um we call it behind the scene teasers that they may throw out to us that may or may not make the cut of the season that we're going to see. But, you know, they have to advertise. They have to advertise their job and their position. So we be there for it because that's where we get most of our entertainment news for those who don't have resources or connections like some of the bigger YouTubers do. And those celebrities or so-called reality TV st uh, stars drop them a little bit of tea for them to keep talking but i'm not that big yet maybe i can but i ain't paying for nobody i ain't paying for a story i'm not paying if they want to interview with me free and dish some dirt that's cool with me but i ain't finna pay that's like gambling i don't gamble i don't even want to leave i don't be want to lose a dollar okay when i be losing on them scratch out tickets when i did used to go and, and play them or whatever i be want my money back you know what I'm saying? I, I, mean, I ain't an Indian giver, but I don't like to lose. So, I know it's a 50-50 chance that I might win big when playing them scratch-off tickets. But I don't even do it no more. I sure don't do it because I, I, I only like losing 50 cents, okay? But anyway, going back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta type of situation we're in. The entanglement we got going on here is Kenya Moore and Marlo Hampton are definitely beefing in social media okay now we have um we have a miss k who's out there writing for reality t and she titles her article uh kenya moore and marlo hampton are reported on the outs once again okay it was started to it, it was starting to look like marlo hampton was always a bridesmaid never a bride but all that changed when she was signed on as a real full-time housewife on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. After many, many years as a friend of, she has finally made it. We're not sure exactly what changed, but fans have been begging Marlo to get her peach forever. Because, uh, you know, Marlo is like hanging around Nene, Kenya, Portia, uh, Cynthia, wherever she can get in, she going to fit in. You know, she was just that ride or die chick. All right, and very mysterious when it came to her being an escort, a woman of the night, you know, for the echelon type of clientele she was hosting for. And she was messing with them Caucasians, okay? Them older Caucasians that just wanted a piece of the brown sugar, baby. Okay, and that's where I get and I got and I'm moving on from that situation. But my question is that I always thought about, what is Nene going to do? You remember, half the time Marla was being seen because Nene brought her on this show and wanted her to have a position. I don't think Nene really wanted her to have a peach because then they would kind of be sort of competing with one another. And we already know Marla got that fashion down, honey. She got fashion to the T. Don't know where she learned it uh, from, but I think she said her grandmother was a very sharp dresser back in the day or something to that effect that i read somewhere i might be mix mixing it up because you know i can't do that too but she used to watch her grandmother dress and how she was, used to put ensembles together and her grandma taught her to go out there and be fabulous and look fabulous okay because then people would look at you at a different standard or a different type of woman that you can be i was like okay i like that i like that but i i don't like the, the stuff she was doing to uh make herself bigger as a socialite messing with you know 
oh like say say smart about 50 something now and i'm just guessing because i really don't know she be messing with 70 year olds <laughs> you know what i'm saying she be they arm candy honey because they can't do too much of nothing they just want her time and companionship and the freaking ones that think they still can get down and they 70 and 80 she probably just let them play with her just let her play with the ussy for a while or whatever or she get them knocked off and they go on to sleep and it just be a nice bank account waiting for her when she wake up so if that's how marlo gets down that's how marlo gets down okay i ain't mad up and i ain't judging okay that is what it is there's only one person higher than all of us that can destroy us with a blink of an eye so i just let him be the judge of setting my soul right okay and i won't judge marlo either but anyway yeah we only have sent i mean i sent you uh kenya and Marlo, that's ready to give the gusto, you're ready to get that big bang for your book type of uh, motivation to get this truck on the road. Because right now, it's just sitting by the side, you know, it's on, sitting on the side, waiting to crank up, ready to get it going. And I think these two beautiful women are going to be the catalyst that sets Real Housewives of Atlanta on fire for season 14. Because we know Candy, she ain't going to do nothing. She ain't going to do nothing. Be a bump on a log. Uh, show how she gets along with everybody in the sandbox. You know, nothing really there. You know, nothing really there. Unless she's going to give us some inside scoop of she ain't liking Todd. She finding out some things about Todd. Todd ain't bringing that to the table when it comes to the investment she done made monetarily for him to pursue something. He just crawling up the back of her ass, following her everywhere she can possibly go. And she likes it like that. Okay. Um, but I don't know if Todd really wants to be seen as a do boy once again for another season. But it just is what it is. He's had definitely ample enough time to do something to stretch his wings out. Because I'm sure Candy don't have him locked so down saying, Look, you gotta be with me and that's where it's gonna be. I'll pay for all your finances, all your wardrobe, uh accessories you need. Your, your time away, you need to be with the boys for the club. I got you. And I'm like, ooh, child. When they said Candy used to take care of men, at first I didn't believe it. But, you know, it just is what it is. Okay, they ain't like Todd is unemployed. It ain't like Todd don't have an education where he can't go do something for himself and excel in there separate from Candy. But it seems like he just like being a well-kept man and a, he likes being a do-boy. Okay, but anyway, moving on from that situation because we didn't come here to talk about Candy and Todd. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Okay, but um, I just want to know how Nene feels about being on the outs and her good, good, good friend. And it was um, a Greg's was a good, good friend. And he liked Marlo, too, because he used to tell Marlo a lot of stuff that he probably didn't tell Nene. And then um, uh, Marlo had to go over there and straighten Nene out on some things and stuff. Uh, when she was taking it all in, that she was a caregiver for Greg, and she was just, everything was just too daunting for her. She just wanted to be, like, you know, kept. And I'm like, Marlo had to bring her to full circle. Like, you don't want to have cancer. He has cancer. We should be feeling a little bit more sorry for him than we need to be giving you all this energy. But we go girls. You know, I'm your girl. I'm going to be down, you know, for you, like, full fat tie. But you get on my nerve, girl. You, get on, you make me miss a hair appointment to come over here for this foolishness of a dinner to just sit and honor you when you ain't the person that said yeah i mean marlo was getting into any in ass and i was a little bit every little bit of it because she wasn't talking nothing but truth facts is what y'all say but back in my day we said telling the truth okay getting down to the real nitty-gritty and said a soul straight okay but anyway i just really feel that nene feel ostracized and it's like she's gonna be on the outside looking in like she had that spot and i just really think that uh, Marlo is going to come. She's going to rise to the occasion. And she's going to take it to another whole level. And I think Nene Ego may be getting in the way. Because I, really, I don't really think that Nene can actually come back on the show as Marlo friend right now. Because she did a lot of dirty stuff. And I don't think nobody really want to be on set with her to infringe on their peace of mind when they're taping. You know what I'm saying? Because Nene might be starting stuff up there. Tell them, we need to boycott. We need to do this. They don't think they're going to let her 10 feet towards the uh bravo franchise of taping or anything they don't want to be bothered with her at all and it's time for nene to accept the fact 
but she lost royally. She lost a nice paycheck for acting, acting ratchet out there. And she needs to send her sights or set her sights on something else in the entertainment business, but not Bravo. Because Bravo got this stuff sold up. They got who they want, and they're going to mold them into who they want them to be. Okay, just like they did Nene Leakes, just like they did Lisa Wu. Just like they did Cynthia Bailey. And the list goes on and on and on and on to the break of dawn. Okay. But with Kenya, Kenya has been a solid player. She comes to play chess. She's an Olympian. And she wants to win the gold all the time. Very competitive. Very strong component. Um, is that that component? Is that proponent? I hell I don't know. She's a strong um what do you call it? Um when you 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 are uh, going against somebody, uh, is it proponent? I don't know what it is. Damn, I forgot. Ah, uh, but anyway, she's a good uh, adversary to try to sit there and 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 make action appear where there's no action. She can drum up any situation, situation, a scenario, and she's gonna make it interesting. You remember, just like she shaded Marlo when she came in there with that three to five piece uh, man band with the uh, drums and, and the flutes and all that and the steppers and stuff and stepped herself right on into Marlo's event show up show out and she dismissed them she said the queen is here team twirl is here now you can proceed with your event <laughs> I was like I almost fell out on the floor when she did that ridiculousness but that's what you call senseless mindless drama you know what I'm saying <laughs> that was funny and I got my last off that particular night of that showing but um yeah i just I, I just came when i was just seeing them two fight i said oh we don't have cynthia here no more to worry about and we don't have nene clowning trying to make everything be about her so i just really wonder what the spice what the uh what do you call it the melting pot soup that's uh kenya and marlo is going to drum up for us and these other ladies such as San, what's it, sandra ross Richards or somebody, the Olympian gold winner. What she, how she's gonna um, fixate herself into the paradigm of the, what do you call it, the aesthetics of what is already there for us, the housewives. And we really need to get rid of Drew Sador. I mean, <laughs> you just bring Marietta Shaw on in, and she'll be a nice centerpiece. And I'm pretty sure she's gonna have a peach. That damn, uh, what her name, Angela, uh, Reverend Ron's daughter. Angela, I don't forget, I, whoever she is, we don't need to see her. She could stay on that baby show over there, uh, Hip Hop Atlanta, or somewhere where Bow Wow was introduced over there. He seemed like he can't get his behind off of there because he ain't nobody in his 20s or, 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 or early 20s. He damn near 40, ain't he? And he's still talking about living hip hop. If he ain't found it in this time, he need to just let it go. Just let it go, just like Stevie one in them braids. How his head on slipped all the way down to his neckline, and he still want to have them braids. And now you got a big old shining ball head. And then you got some, uh, <laughs> you got some long um, extensions coming down. I'm like, give it up, Stevie. If you can't see, baby, you can show sure feel. Ain't nothing wrong with your hands filling your ball ass head up there for you to keep still wearing these braids. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. It's gone. It's gone. The ship has sailed. It's gone. But uh, that's how Angela Simmons, that's her name. Uh, she needs to not come. We don't need her. We need Drusador to go because I don't want another storyline of her husband and her mama getting into it. That's kind of like Candy uh, Crew. Now, we got one of them already. We don't need another one. We got rid of, um, what's her name? Shamari DeVoe real quick, fast in a hurry. We can damn do the same with Drew Sador because we don't need another mini me. Somebody trying to look like Portia. No, we don't. Okay, because Portia may come back anyway. She'll be dried, tired, and through uh, with all this mess with her reality show that has been nothing but a train wreck for the last three episodes of our first season. Total train wreck. And you can definitely see a divide in her dad's side of the family and her mother's side of the family. The two just do not go together. And to have your family members being shown on television as being ratchet, unkept, 
not together and as they say a house about it should never stand them houses done crumble to the ground do you hear me because they ain't standing they, they can't stand because all of them are confused people wanting airtime to think they're going to get into a situation where they they can be amongst the who's who but i'm like just as quick as we saw them we can quickly forget about them as well because none of them none of them that portia introduced us to were anybody that would stay in my mind that i want to see again i mean literally no one on her mother's side now her daddy's side ah <sighs> No, not even on her dad's side, the William side. We don't really want to see them either. Um, because Portia was enough. She, she 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 gives us enough, and that's enough. We don't need any more breeds coming from uh, uh, not on her mother's side or her dad's side. But going getting off of them, okay? Going back to um, the latest article, uh, she goes on to say, after... Many, many years as friend, she became a peach holder in her own rights, okay? And we definitely have been seeing Marlo on the show as a consistent uh, member of uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, even though she did not hold a peach. She has that honorary peach going on because we, we didn't see her in any scenes of, of the Real Housewives of Atlanta in whatever season we was in. We, you know, we was kind of like, where is she? We missed her, you know what I'm saying? We missed her. So they gave gave her to us in different um, episodes with you know limited time being shown. But when she was on camera, she gave us the gusto, and I can appreciate that. That's what drama is all about. Don't get too uh, uh, too much or too much of a situation, okay? Because too much is just too much, and it's gonna just woo, just make us go crazy for the negative. We just need a balance. Of dra you know, some good sense. And we need some drama mixed in. Then we need to, you know, um, what do you call it? Mesh it out to where we can get a moral to the story that they just showed us that particular episode. You know what I'm saying? But uh, moving on. One thing, going back to the article, article about Marlo, well, she always got right in the middle of the drama. And I just told y'all that because that's what she does. She gets right up in, spark that firecracker to light up, and then she going to make that, uh, we call them sparkles, and that's all we got. Nothing but mess, okay? Mess, mess, mess. Uh, nobody does it like her and Kenya, let me tell you that. <laughs> Okay, Marlo be quick to say, I apologize, I apologize, and then throw another rock where everybody knows she throwed it. Because she don't throw no rocks and hides. She just put the rock out there and said, whoops, <laughs> I did just apologize to you, but I just have to break it down to you. You ain't shit. That one, that's, <laughs> that's how Marlo comes in, and you just have to grab her, hug her, and keep moving, okay? Because she's going to show up and show out every time she invited to the party, okay? Uh, but going back to the article, wait a minute, something happened with my phone. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Let me reboot the phone. Okay, here we go. It says, um, Marlo is always right in the middle of the drama despite her limited role. And she has her ups and downs with her castmates since she joined. One such friendship was her back and forth with now ex-housewife Nene Lee's. Despite Nene giving her two cents that she doesn't think Marlo should get a full-time role, Marlo was all about Nene coming back. But Nene isn't the only one Marlo has had problems with. She has a long-standing feud with Twirl Kim, uh, Twirl Queen Kenya Moore, who is will who is will share the new season with Marlo. Okay, um, but like I had told y'all. Nene, same thing she did with Cynthia. She said Cynthia didn't really bring anything to the show and she should not hold a peach. So, see, she was throwing salt in the entrance of them trying to open the door to bring Marlo in while she was there. No, she didn't want Marlo to uh, have all that ambiance and that type of atmosphere where she'll be rubbing with some celebrities here and there. But I'm like, the, the, the damage had already been done. You let Marlo come in and be a household name along with you all, and she'd be showing up and showing out. So, yes, it was her time now. It is her time now, and that's why you have been 86 out, because you showed your own self out the door, Nene. Really, you did. So, no, Marlo is a welcoming to replace you because that's how i see her replacing you but moving on from that situation uh but nini is it the okay 
can you okay and although it seemed like last year they formed an alliance to take down Portia Williams, that looks to be over and done with, especially since Portia left the show with her own spinoff. And we already told you about that debacklement of a sitcom or, or, or um, what do you call it, a spinoff show that Bravo gave her off the Real Housewives of Atlanta's name. Okay, thinking that's going to draw people in, which they did, but ever since uh, her show appeared or um came out she had 880 something thousand viewers that first episode that second episode it went down to seven something that third episode it went down to six something and i can't imagine what it is now okay because i was like y'all need to just stop it going to show us that part where she's supposed to be fighting with someone or getting somebody together and everybody just went ham and they had to cut the cameras off or whatnot and grab Portia Simon over there holding her down on the sofa she yelling crying and carrying on so I don't know who she tried to get her hands on you know because Miss Portia a little fighter over there she put ready to put them paws on folks okay when she can't get her way or she feel like they ain't hearing her verbally she just feel like she need to reach out and touch someone bow 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 bow, bow you know them hands okay like okay now Next step, we're sending you back to anger management because evidently you didn't learn how to deal with your anger. Okay? But, uh, yeah, and then they just need to just close up shop and Portia need to bring her behind back on Real Housewives of Atlanta if that's what she choose to do. But she cannot hold a show where it's going to be entertaining. She needs her family members and she needs Dennis because really, to me, that's the Dennis show. <laughs> that's the Dennis and Lauren show over there. Uh, what she calls Portia Family Matters. Now, nah, this Dennis and Lauren. Uh, I think Lauren's kind of low key uh, hating on uh, Portia to her half sister because she's been getting a lot of confessional times and she does explain herself real nice. And she is definitely becoming. Uh, well, we can see, or I can see her now as a housewife, a uh, friend of the show that's a staple uh, person. Uh, to appear here and there's something like how Marlo got started and she she's likable now but honey oh uh, if the if, if then you could probably see some sparks flying towards uh Dennis and uh Lauren if these things tend to progress you see what I'm saying because she lonely she ain't got nobody Dennis ain't never had nobody because he's been a little playboy over there and whether it's right or wrong sometimes lust sneaks in uh those desires sneak in you know the flesh is weak and some very interesting things can happen when those all those elements meet each other and both of y'all are feeling bad yep hitting the booty and the sheets will uh partake it will happen okay given those certain elements and those weaknesses are uh are down your 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 guards are down and you're just feeling like you just want to be held you want to be loved you will reach out to some things and some people that you shouldn't be partaking in because they're somebody else's you see what i'm saying but y'all was in that moment y'all were heated y'all were drunk y'all were uh feeling lonely depressed and it, it just happened yes and that's how babies get born too and we don't think Portia can handle that. A betrayal of her ex, uh, fiance, baby daddy, and her half sister hooking up. Now that'll be a storyline right there. <laughs> and I'd be sitting there watching it unfold because that wouldn't be ratchet. That would be like, well, that could happen in real life. You know what I'm saying? Let me see how they gonna handle this mess. All right. But anyway, going back to the article, it said, um, let me see. Says Marlo has also added a cryptic post to her Instagram story, seemingly aimed at Kenya. It read, "I will unfriend, uncousin, un un coworker, unfollow, un un family, a draining soul real quick." Kenya has yet to respond with shade of her own, but I'm patiently, but I'm wait a minute, with shade of her own, but I'm impatiently waiting. I seriously doubt. Anyone is surprised by this turn of events. Fans know that housewife friendships change very fast. And Marlo has made it clear that she doesn't fully trust Kenya. Marlo said back in April, loyalty is really big when it comes to an Aquarius. And I know she got that right. 
you can mess up with me one time. You ain't going to get a second chance. You ain't going to even think about a third chance rolling around. Because pretty much when a person show you who they really are, that's your decision to decide if you want to keep effing with them or not. Because it ain't like they didn't show you who they really were when they were put in another situation where everything ain't so cool. Things ain't always going right. Uh, you know, when they back pushed up against the wall on whatever they may be going through, you're going to really see who that person is and what they're made of. So I could definitely understand. And true Aquarians, they don't like to be made a fool of. And if they are made a fool of, they can figure out who made the fool out of them. Man, that trust gone. I mean, it ain't too much. Well, you know, they'll forgive you, but they ain't going to F with you no more. Not like that. <laughs> Uh, but going on it says and when kenya didn't invite me to her home housewarming party and her birthday party because her and nini reunited that crushed me because kenya and i would be on the phone she would be facetiming me uh outfits i was out in la at her house she continued i'm like damn you really called me and asked me how to decorate your party and you didn't invite me because you reunited with nini I wasn't going to come and act crazy at your party because Nene was there. So it's going to take time. So obviously something happened during the filming to make these two hate each other again. It's a shame too because I really think Marlo and Kenya teaming up would be a force to be reckoned with. But I guess it's not in the stars. At least not this season. And I disagree on that real part because I'm saying it's going to be fireworks regardless whether they're on the same team or not. Both women are going to give the shade and they're going to give us a good show. That's one thing I can depend on both of them ladies to do. Okay. But y'all get down in them comments. It's time for you all to relay, to put y'all comments down there. And let me tell you, let you tell me how y'all felt. Not just about my video and how I presented it, but what y'all felt about the article and how things are going between these two women. Should they be friends or should they be foes? Either way, it's good for me. I prefer foe. <laughs> I really prefer both but if i had to make a choice and i wanted to be seen ethical and morally astute i would say okay they how would we do 50 50 they be friends from the start and be enemies at the end or vice versa just give me some nonsense drama that doesn't take away uh me feeling like you just full of shit or you just trash you know what i'm saying in real life okay because i can say i've heard people met kenya and kenya is a very sweetheart she does a little signing of the autographs taking selfies when she can and i've heard marlo being outstanding in that uh environment as well now we all know how nini get down we ain't even got to go through that because tmz be on her ass and they be having the footage and everything okay and she just be downright nasty and portia has a good um she has a good rapport when it comes to meeting her fans follows or whatnot even though she had them on a book signing but i'm sure she's probably very nice if you met her out in the street as well we just can't depend on portia to make the right decisions when it comes to her livelihood or her personal life when it comes to a man being in her life because she feel like she just got to have a man or husband and she's not complete okay she's not complete and i'm like i thought the baby completed you baby I, I, you know i don't understand where you coming but we got to go back to Miss Diane, her mama, and Diane's mama to figure that one out. Okay? And if we got time, maybe we will one day. But I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not that invested. I'm not that invested, guys. But that's all I have for this particular video. Don't forget to share and like my videos. Share and like my videos. Share and like my videos. Okay? And if you so, like I said, Lord, lift us up where we belong. If you're inclined, please subscribe. That will help me out as well. And we can grow, 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 grow. And many people can come and see me and get some laughs, some key keys, okay? Because I'm just silly as hell. None of this stuff I be talking about is alleged. Uh, and, you know, it's all alleged. And, and unless I can specifically, to, uh, specifically tell you that I met them. And they are not like this in real life. Just like I was telling y'all, I um, met Jocelyn Hernandez. And the person that you see on screen is definitely not the person that you see in real life very much a sweetheart took pictures with me talked to my daughter over the phone uh you know i gave her some discounts too but she didn't know that until she you know she didn't know that that i was giving her a discount until after the fact but she was just like you know i met her brother he was buying stuff for his daughter 
uh, that he was going to go back. I don't know if he said in Puerto Rico or somewhere, but he wasn't here. He didn't live here in Georgia, but he was very nice. I mean, very nice people, okay? Very nice young lady. And I met Stevie J. He was kind of standoffish, but he I, I took a selfie with him as well. And he seems to be, like, in his own little mood. You know, so if he's, like, trying to shop or he's trying to be by himself, he wants to do that but he knows it's like he quickly had a flashback like damn you know she might follow me on in real life i don't want to you know disrespect her or not give her you know a, a dab or a hug or something to that effect to make her not like me because he knows all about uh what do you call it um what do you call it <sighs> being uh, a public figure and treating people right you know when you're in the public eye so he's always trying to watch what he does so it don't come back in social media that somebody said he was me he was this he was that you know what i'm saying he's always conscious of w what his surroundings are and how it may play out later so i can say that he he was like real you know like really excited to you know take a picture uh with me or to get an autograph but when he thought about it he's like no let me go on and do this but when i met joycelyn she was just like oh hey how you doing you know she had a little baby at the time it was just a cute um cute little atmosphere that i was in with her or you know the conversation we had was really down to earth like i was talking to a family member so that's what i can say you can not always judge a book by its cover kind of get to know that person or just keep watching them and if you have a chance to see them interact in real life you could get the uh you can form your own opinion of who they are you know what i'm saying because you can't keep up a facade for so long I meaning you can't wear this mask that you want people to see it's gonna come off it's gonna come out that true personality you just have to keep watching them and observing okay but that's all i have for this video guys i will see y'all on the next video and be breezy